When we think about the discovery of North America, we usually think of Christopher Columbus, but for many years that hasn't been the case, as another group of explorers is not talked about enough. They discovered North America around 400 years before Columbus. I'm talking about the Vikings and how they can be seen as the first Europeans to travel to the New World. To start things off, two Icelandic tales tell the Vikings journey to North America the Saga of the Greenlanders, and the Saga of Eric the Red. These books were written around the 13th century, yet the journeys likely took place around 970 and 1030. That means the books are written around 200 years or so after. So there are some issues of the tales being accurate to an extent. The Saga of the Greenlanders is considered by some historians as more reliable of the two books. It tells the account of a man named Bjarni Hardrifson, an Icelandic merchant, he was supposedly sailing to meet his father in Greenland, but was taken off course, where he found a strange land. He described the land as having small hills with many forests. Bjarni was said to have never set foot in this unknown land. The title of first known European in North America goes to Leif Erikson. But before we get into the journeys of the famous Leif Erikson, we have to talk about his father, Eric the Red, to fill in the gaps. Eric the Red was found guilty of murder and was exiled from Iceland in around 980. When Leif Erikson was just a child, Eric the Red went exploring and discovered Greenland. He traveled back to Iceland and told of this new land. He took his sons Leif, Thorvald, and Thorstein, his daughter Freydis, and many others looking for a new way of life to Greenland. Eric the Red establishes a place in Greenland called Bratahild, where Leif Erikson would grow up. In around the year 1000, Leif Erikson traveled to Norway, where he was converted to Christianity by King Olaf I. This next part of the tale is where things start branching off into uncertainty. We have two different accounts from both books. In the saga of Eric the Red, Erikson and his crew lost their way when they were traveling to Greenland and just happened to land in North America by accident. Or in the Greenlander saga, where Erikson was intentionally looking for North America by the account of Barney Harvison, which supposedly found the continent 14 or so years before. Regardless, Leif Erikson supposedly traveled to a place he called Heluland, which meant land of the flat rocks. This area is believed to be Baffin Island. This place wasn't a suitable location due to the bareness of the land. So the Norsemen moved on, where they found a land filled with trees. Erikson called this place Markland, or Forest Land. This place is believed to be Labrador. Next, they found an island that had wild grapes. Erikson called this place Vineland, or Wineland. Erikson and his crew stayed through the winter and left for Greenland in the spring, taking with them a bunch of grapevines and other resources like timber. On their way back to Greenland, Erikson happened to find a group of men stranded at sea. He saved them and took them back to Greenland. For this heroic deed, Erikson was given the title Life the Lucky. At this point, not much else is known about Erikson. It is likely he stayed in Greenland to spread the word of Christianity. He likely took over as leader after his father's death, and that's about it. In the saga of Eric the Red, it tells of other voyages to North America, but unlike the Greenland saga, life Erikson is not as important. It more focuses on his siblings and the Icelandic trader Thorfinn Karlsefni. After life Erikson's voyage, his brother Thorvald led an expedition to Vineland. Unfortunately, it is said that he died to local Native Americans. Sometime after, his brother Thorstein attempted an expedition to retrieve his brother's body, but it is said that the harsh weather at sea made it impossible. The next voyage was led by a man named Thorfinn Karlsefni with Erikson's sister Freydis. It is said that he and his crew settled in Vinland for a couple of years until a people the Vikings called Skraelings, which could mean barbarian or foreigner, in Old Norse became hostile. It is possible that the people were Inuit natives, which greatly outnumbered the Vikings, so they decided to make their way back to Greenland. The last known voyage to Vinland was led by Freydis, along with her crew, as well as two Icelandic brothers with their men. Disagreements arose with Freydis and the brothers, and she eventually had the brothers and their crew killed. That is a gist of the tales, but how much of that is true? We do know for sure that the Vikings came to Newfoundland, Canada. The discovery of a Norse settlement at Elance Ox Meadows has some interesting history involving its discovery. In 1914, William Munn, who published the newspaper, The Evening Telegram, was the first person to claim there were remnants of a Norse settlement in Newfoundland. 
Over the years, many others had similar theories and did some simple excavations, but it was in 1960 when Helge Ingstad and his daughter were led to grass-covered mounds. Helge's wife, Ansting Ingstad, led excavation from 1961 to 1968, where they found strong evidence of a Norse settlement that could be dated to around the 11th century. At the site of La Anse Axe Meadows, eight sod structures can be identified. There were multiple longhouses of large halls and small huts, all of which were of the 10th and 11th century style, which would be consistent with the tales. Based on the space inside each building, it is estimated the population of the Norse settlement could house between 70 to 90 people. It is suggested that this settlement was a base camp for exploration and not a colony, and there is evidence that supports this idea. At the site, there were fire strikers found. They were made of jasper. What is significant about them is where they originally came from. Two strikers came from Icelandic jasper, and four out of five of the strikers from the largest building can be traced back to jasper found in Greenland. There were even fire strikers found that would have come from Notre Dame Bay on the northern coast of Newfoundland, which shows that the Vikings traveled there. Another interesting discovery was the presence of butternuts found in a bog. It turns out they are not native to Newfoundland and are found in eastern New Brunswick. Funny enough, it so happens that these butternuts are found in the same area as wild grapes and ripen around the same time in the late summer. This means the tales about the grapes adds up as well as it shows the Vikings could have explored quite a bit. Some other artifacts found at the settlement were mostly wood objects and nails that were likely just left there. There was evidence of smithing done at the site as there was waste matter found that would suggest iron production. A spindle wheel was found. This would show that women were also living in the settlement. All in all, how many artifacts were found and the lack of rebuilding gives us an idea that the settlement was not inhabited for a long period, maybe a decade or so. When it comes to whether the settlement at La Anse Ox Meadows is connected to Life Erikson or Thorfinn Karlsefni, it is just too hard to say, as we would need at least a name carved into a piece of wood to prove it. But that doesn't take away from the fact that the thousand-year-old tales have some weight to them. I find it amazing that the ancients referred to a land of grapes, only to find a Viking settlement with wild grapes not far off. It gives credence to these legendary tales. It is one of the reasons why I love studying history. Back on topic, it's Life Erikson Day on October 9th. It is a time to celebrate the first known European to visit North America. It marks a historical moment for Nordic people everywhere. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, Make sure to leave a like and share this video. If you haven't already, subscribe for more history content and I'll see you guys in the next video.